winter is here. I finally swapped out my summer wardrobe for my winter one and I thought I would share today five of my wardrobe heroes for the winter season. Hi, I'm Amelia and welcome to my channel So Amelia where I talk all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. Today I'm sharing five patterns that I reach for again and again and again throughout the winter months and I hope they will inspire you with your winter sewing. So it's half term here in England. We've had a busy morning full of making brownies, going for walks to the park. So I'm wearing something very comfy and cozy, which I shall talk about later on in the video. Apologies if there's brownie on me. I did try to wear an apron, <laughs> but with small people, uh, one can never be too covered up, especially when you're wearing white. Probably not the best choice for baking, but we had fun. So if there are any noises in this video, I do apologize. My children are just having a bit of time, quiet time in their rooms this afternoon after a busy morning. And I thought I would just see if I could sneak this video in whilst they're just having some downtime. So let's get straight into it. And I thought I would start with sort of a base layer or a top, one I reach for all the time. And it is the Megan Nielsen Rowan top and bodysuit. Now this is a fantastic pattern. Like a lot of Megan Nielsen patterns, it comes with lots and lots of different options. It comes as a t-shirt and top, or it comes as the bodysuit. There are three lengths of sleeves. There's the short sleeve, the three quarter length sleeve, and the full length sleeve, and there are three different neck options. There is the crew neck, there is a mock turtle neck, and there is also a v-neck. So fantastic options to pick and choose from in terms of making this pattern. Now I've made two versions of this so far and here they are. So both of these are bodysuits because actually I really wanted to give bodysuits a try. I just find in the winter it's frustrating when you're running around after children and bending over all the time to constantly tuck in tops and t-shirts. So I thought I would give bodysuits a try and they have been surprisingly comfortable. I really enjoy wearing these throughout the winter months. So much so that I actually did make a t-shirt bodysuit for the summer. So these are both in fabrics that I bought from Andrea at Beyond the Pink Door. I suspect they're not available anymore, but she does have a fantastic selection of cotton jerseys and French terriers. They are gorgeous. So I'll pop the link to her shop below if you want to have a browse. So this is the first one I made in a black and white stripe and I reach for this all the time. I pair it with jeans, I pair it with skirts, I put it under pinafores. It's a really hard working piece in my winter wardrobe. I made it with the crew neck. Now this version of the crew neck is fine. It doesn't sit too high, although it definitely is a close fitting crew neck. So if that's not something you prefer, you may want to think about lowering the neckline on this particular pattern because it does sit quite high. But for the winter months, I don't mind that at all. So I always fall between three sizes on Megan Nielsen patterns. My bust is a size 10, my waist is a size 12, my hips are a size 14. So I did just grade this pattern between the bust, waist and hip notches that are on the pattern. If you'd like me to do a tutorial for how I grade my patterns, do just leave a comment in the box below and I'd be happy to share that in one of my future videos. So this one was graded from a 10 at the bust through to a 12 at the waist and then out to a 14 over the hips. And this is a great full coverage bodysuit over your bottom and there's plenty of room in this and the poppers go on really beautifully. I loved the construction of this. It was a lovely one to put together and pretty quick too because it is jersey. So the other version I made was the mock turtleneck. The neckline almost for the crew neck and the mock turtleneck are the same. It's just the difference is what you add here at the neckband. And again, this is a lovely bright color. I do love wearing bright colors in the winter. It just cheers me right up. And again, this was made in the bodysuit version. I have made a swimsuit before, so actually putting the elastic in for this one was fine. But if you have made swimsuits or if you've made knickers before, I think you would be fine. And the instructions are really good in terms of talking you through how to add the elastic into these leg openings. And I found them really, really comfortable to wear. So these are the two versions that I wear in the winter. I did make a white t-shirt version for the summer, but I do find the crew neck on that one comes up quite high. So I think for next summer, I'm actually going to drop that further down. I may even make it into the v-neck version or just drop the crew neck down and insert a new neckband because I do find that one a little bit tight. But these two versions are fabulous and I do reach for them all winter long. So I should just say there are two size band for Megan Nielsen patterns. There is the Megan Nielsen size 0 to 20 and then there is the Megan Nielsen curve which is the sizes 14 to 30. So the 0 to 20 sizes are made for a B cup and the 14 to 30 size bands are for a D cup. So that's fantastic. There is a wide size range for these patterns. And like I said, if you don't prefer a bodysuit, you can just make these as the t-shirt or long sleeve top. I'm tempted to make the, the mock turtleneck version of this in a long sleeve top 
for the winter because I think that would be a really good addition to my handmade wardrobe. The next pattern I'm going to mention is a jumper and it's actually the one I'm wearing today. This is the Clemence jumper by Fiber Mood and it was one of the first Fiber Mood patterns that I made actually and I really enjoyed making this one. I do have to say for Fiber Mood patterns the instructions are a little on the sparse side but actually if you use the instructions on the website they are better than the ones in the magazine as there is a little bit more detail and actually this was such a straightforward sew that it came together quite quickly even with these somewhat limited instructions. Now I love this sweatshirt, it's a knit fabric sweatshirt obviously and it comes with this super fun pleat detail in the sleeve head and a really lovely neck band here which is quite wide and sits in just a really lovely place. It feels quite loose and relaxed and the fit of the sweater is quite loose and relaxed too. Five mood sizes are great, they have a good size range. This one comes in their size range from extra small to 3XL which is up to a bust of about 58 inches so it's great. Now it is a slightly oversized fit. I'm really happy with this one. I wear it as you see today for relaxed days and holidays with my children. I've just styled it with some jeans today. It's great for everyday wear. I do love this sleeve detail and I think if I was to make it again and perhaps a sweat in it I'd possibly size down just to take out some of the ease in the body but I do love this one and I reach for it all the time and I made this in an atelier brunette sweatshirt fabric it's really lovely actually because it is warm but it's not too heavy so it's great for these early winter days or late autumn days perhaps where it's cool but not that cold yet. The pleat detail went in really easily and really nicely and I do like that that adds just an extra feature to an otherwise fairly simple sweatshirt. So in terms of what size I made, I went with my bust measurement which is what they suggest for this pattern and I made the size 12 or the medium. I think next time I would size down to a 10 partly because I've lost a little bit of weight in this area um, but partly also just for a slightly closer fit and a sweater that I can perhaps wear um, to go out with some friends for an evening. One that looks just a little bit more stylish rather than for everyday wear. So the next pattern that I'm going to share with you is one that I'm sure you all know and I'm sure a lot of you have made this one and it is the Tilly and the Buttons Billy Jumper and Dress. Now this is a super quick and easy and very very comfortable sweater and dress and it's quite a simple make. There are plain sleeves, there are balloon sleeves, ballooned at the top, gathered at the top and at the bottom into a lovely deep sleeve cut and the dress is really quite fitted at the waist and then it flares out over the hips and comes back in with a band at the bottom and it finishes at about mid thigh or it did on me and I'm about five foot five so I am the height that the pattern is drafted for and I found for me that it came up quite short. It does come in Tilly's full range of sizes now so size 0 to about 34 and that's up to about a 60 inch bust which is fantastic. There is also online now a ruffle add-on that you can put over the sleeve head which I think obviously as someone who loves ruffles is fantastic. So the next time I make the billy jumper I might just download that. It is a free download and pop it onto my next make. Let me share the billies I've made with you so far. So this is the first billy jumper that I made. I absolutely love this fabric. Now I made this a while ago now so I actually can't remember where I bought this fabric but if I do remember I will pop it in the description box below. It is a lovely French terry and it's lovely and thick and snugly and warm for the winter months. Now I normally style this one with boots and tights but if I'm very honest with you I find this one too short. Now when I made this I sized down quite a lot. In Tilly patterns I'm a size three over the bust, a four over the waist, and a five over the hips. And I sized down to a two across the bust, a three at the waist. I went out to a four over the hips because there's quite a lot of ease in the finished garment measurements. But I do find the band at the bottom is also quite tight fitting and it just comes in quite a lot over my thighs and it's also a little on the short side for me. It finishes about four inches above my knees. So yes, I absolutely love this version but if I'm being completely honest I don't reach for it very often because I do just find it too short for me to feel comfortable in, especially when I'm jumping on and off the bike on the school run. So what I might do with this one, because I do love the fabric so much, is actually trim it off here and make it into a billy jumper because I think I would then reach for it a lot more and wear it with my jeans because I do love the fabric and the rest of it works really nicely so I think I'll just chop it off here at the hips 
and turn it into a billy jumper. Because I did love this pattern so much, I wanted to have another go at it and make it slightly more wearable for me. So the second version I made was in this gorgeous French terry from Amy Elizabeth Fabrics. Now sadly, she's not going to sell fabrics anymore. I've always loved her fabrics, and this was one that I thought was so much fun for the winter. Now this time, I did the same grading as before, the two at the bust, a three at the waist to a four at the hips, but then I actually graded out again to a size five for this band at the bottom, which just gives me slightly more wiggle room. And then I lengthened the pattern by, I think two or three inches to make it sit just above my knee, which is a length I'm just more comfortable with um, in my daily life. And I wore this one last winter all the time. The other change I made with this one was with the balloon sleeves. I really liked the fullness of the sleeves at the cuff, but I just found it was a little bit much up here at the sleeve head. So what I did was I used the regular sleeve pattern for the sleeve head, and then I just graded that out to the balloon sleeve pattern for the bottom of the sleeve. So it makes for a lovely voluminous sleeve, particularly at the bottom. It's a dress that I reach for all the way through the winter. It's just really cozy and comfortable. And if I'm honest, it feels a little bit like secret pajamas. So given the success of this version, I decided to make one more version last winter. And this version I made out of a black sweater knit fabric from Sewers Faction. It is my favorite billy dress to wear and I reach for it all the time. It is in this super, super cozy sweater knit fabric. It feels lovely and warm and cozy. And I finished it off with the cuffs and with the hem band using poppy cuffing, pre-made cuffing, which I just thought added a really interesting, almost Christmassy touch to the dress and just made it have that little pop of color that I really enjoy. I don't wear black a lot, but when I do, I like to add a little pop of color and I really like these cuffs and the hem band, I think. They look really fun. And I did exactly the same thing as the previous dress I mentioned in terms of grading from a size two to a three to a four to a five at the hem band, which was perfect. The one thing I have to say about the billy dress is I do find that the neck band fits quite tightly and it's quite close fitting. So I do find myself reaching and sort of pulling it down a little through the day. Sadly, I don't have any more of this fabric left, but it hasn't put me off wearing this version because I absolutely love the fabric and how cozy and comfy it feels. But I think if I was to make it again this winter, I would probably drop that crew neck slightly just to give me a bit more wiggle room around the neck as it's not perhaps the most comfortable neckline. But I love everything else about the dress and I do wear it a lot. Given the success of the dress, I decided to try the Billy jumper version. And actually this is my most reached for jumper pattern now. And the first version that I made was in <laughs> this Atelier brunette sweatshirting, which you'll see I'm wearing in the other colorway. I loved this one so much. I went back and bought it in the white colorway as well. But this one is not the Clemence jumper. This one is the Billy jumper. Now you'll see this time I made it with just the plain straight sleeves. I didn't do the balloon sleeves uh, at the cuff here. I kept them very plain and I did my same grading as before. I graded from a two to a three at the waist and out to a four here over the hip area. I find this jumper for me finishes at a really nice point. It fits beautifully over cropped jeans, over skirts. It's just a lovely, cozy, comfy jumper. I particularly like it because it is quite nice and fitted across the bust and then it's looser over the waist and hips. So I do feel quite put together when I have this one on because it does fit really nicely. So that's my Billy jumper and I've made a few more versions of that Billy jumper because I do just find it a really easy and quick pattern to put together. And I'm really happy with where I've got to on the fit of this jumper and dress now. So my next winter wardrobe hero is another Tilly in the Buttons pattern and it is the Lyra shirt dress. There are so many shirt dresses in the ready to wear shops this winter and I love wearing dresses. It's just so easy to put one on and to go and to feel put together. And the Lyra shirt dress is such a beautiful pattern. It has a simple, slightly loose fitting bodice with a button down front, a stand collar, and then it has either short sleeves or full length sleeves. Then it has a skirt which you can either make as a mini skirt to the knee or you can add a ruffle on to make it more of a midi length option. And this again comes in Tilly's full range of sizes from zero to 34. Now, like I said before with the Billy jumper, my Tilly sizes are roughly a size three at the bust, a four at the hips and a five at the waist. But because I had read a lot of reviews about this one coming up quite oversized, I decided to just size down to a straight size three. Because of the skirt on this pattern, I wasn't so worried about the fit around my hips and the bodice fits quite high up around my natural waist. So again, looking at the finished garment measurements, 
I knew that there'd be enough ease in this to make a straight size three. So this is made in a Lady McElroy viscose lawn and putting a collar in in viscose lawn is quite an experience. It was fine, I just cut it extremely carefully and the pattern instructions do have you cut the top collar piece on the straight grain and the under collar piece on the bias. But because I was working with a viscose lawn and I knew it would be slippery anyway, I cut both on the straight grain. It sits fine and it just meant that there wasn't the same amount of stretch in that bias under collar piece which made it a lot easier to put together and to fit into the collar stand. I'm so pleased with how this one came together. It's beautiful and floaty and I wear it in the autumn with a jumper over the top and the same in the winter, lay it up with tights and boots and then when it gets really cold I often will put the turtleneck, like a wool turtleneck, underneath for just an added layer of warmth. But it's just so easy, it just goes on and it looks put together and it's comfy and it's definitely a wardrobe staple. What I did do was I added these ties and I put them into the side seam and I just like to tie those either at the front or at the back depending on my mood and that just brings it in a little bit more at the waist and makes it look slightly more fitted which is the look that I prefer. So this is a definite favourite for my winter wardrobe. The only thing I would say about the Lyra dress to just be aware of is whilst the bodice and the skirt are somewhat oversized, the sleeves are not. So actually those sleeves on me fit fine but I would say that they are quite fitted. So if you prefer your sleeves loose just bear that in mind. I actually think next time I might lower the arm size a little bit and put the size 4 sleeves into the size 3 bodice just to give me a little bit more wiggle room in the sleeves. I would love to make a longer sleeve version of the Lyra for the winter, perhaps in a lovely baby cord. I think I'd get a lot of wear out of that, but I would definitely make that amendment to the sleeves the next time that I make it. So my fifth wardrobe hero is the Friday Pattern Company Davenport dress. Now I'm sure you've seen this one before, it's just such a beautiful pattern. It has this bodice that's gathered into elastic at the neck, which gives it these lovely gathers across the front of the bodice. There are sleeve ruffles, there is a lovely gathered yoke here on the back of the dress. Then there is a channel here at the waist for a waist tie. And then there are two tiers to the skirt. There's the skirt here and then the added ruffle. There's quite a lot going on in this dress, but I do love it. And again, in the winter, I wear this one with tights and boots and I can chuck on a cardigan over the top of it as well if I need the added warmth. I have also put a turtleneck under this one before, just a white turtleneck, which just adds another layer of warmth as well. Now the sleeves on this dress are around about, I would say, three quarter length. They say it's bracelet length, but on me it finishes around about here on my arm, which is actually fine because I'm busy mum. I often end up pushing my sleeves up anyway, and so it's actually quite a practical length. But if you were to make it and you wanted to have the sleeves finishing on your wrist, as I did for my other version that I made. So I've actually used this sleeve piece on other dresses because I do really like it. And I have lengthened it by about four inches in other versions that I've made when I want it to finish at the wrist. So do be aware if you make this pattern that the sleeves are not full length sleeves. They are slightly shorter than that. So you may want to make some adjustments if you prefer your sleeves to be full length. This pattern comes in Friday Pattern Company's excellent size range from an extra small all the way up to a 7XL. Now in Friday Pattern Company patterns, my bust actually falls into a medium, my waist falls between the medium and the large, and my hips fall just between a large and an extra large. But looking at the finished garment measurements for the Davenport dress, there is a lot of ease in this pattern. And since it is quite a floaty dress, I did want to make sure that it wasn't too oversized. So I did actually size down to a small, and that is perfect. There's still plenty of room in the sleeves and in the bodice and I can draw it in at the waist which is what I like to do with this waist tie and it just fits perfectly. Now because I love that one so much and because I found it so easy to wear, I did make another version, sort of. Now this is my mixture of actually the Friday Pattern Company patina blouse and the Davenport skirt with the Davenport sleeves. <laughs> so I, should know. I think I called it a patina port or a Davantina, I think I called it a Davantina. But again, it's another one I love. This fabric came from Aurea Textiles, and I'll link it below if it's still available. And it's got the beautiful collar of the patina blouse, and the patina blouse also has this lovely gathering across the back, so there's a similarity there. And then I just put on the waist channel as per the Davenport dress and added the lovely skirt and ruffle. So 
So I really enjoy this one as well. I love the big collar, although I do wish that I'd put a contrasting ruffle or trim around the collar as the fabric is so busy that you don't really see the collar so much. So if I was to make it again, I'd probably go back and add a ruffle or a trim to that collar. But regardless of trims and ruffles, and again, this is another version that I love, and I did lengthen the sleeves on this one. So they do have that added three or four inches and four more at my wrist, which is, I think, quite nice in the winter time. So another one that I style with tights and boots, just a really quick and easy one to put on and to look put together, which is a win in my book. Now, before I go, I thought I would add one extra pattern to this video, and that is what you can see on the mannequin behind me. Now, I'll just pull her forward. So, here she is, Dolly, my beautiful helper, and um, wearing my sixth pattern that I thought I'd share with you today, it's a bit of a bonus, and that is the Vetiver Top by French Navy with the long sleeve expansion. Now French Navy is a South African pattern company, and so I was actually asked to test the expansion for the Vetiver Top in the height of our English summer. So this one hasn't had a lot of wear yet, but the reason I included it as a wardrobe hero is because I absolutely adore my summer versions of the Vetiver blouse, the short sleeve versions, and I wore them all the way through the summer this year and I can see myself reaching for this long sleeve version of the vetiver blouse throughout the winter months as well. In fact I have already been wearing this one quite a lot in the autumn weather. French navy patterns come in sizes A to H so it's not a hugely size inclusive range yet but I know that's something that Sarah from French navy is working on for her future patterns. So this one goes up to a bust of 43 and a quarter inches and it is a more loose fitting blouse so actually although I fell more into a size D in French navy patterns I sized down to a size C for a blouse that has a slightly more fitted look across the bust and I absolutely love it. This blouse has got princess seams and it's got a lovely thin button placket down the front here and it has a beautiful Peter Pan collar that comes in the expansion. So you do have to buy the two patterns, the Betty Bear top and the expansion to get the collar piece. And then the expansion also comes with these beautiful sleeves finished with a lovely placket and cuff. Now there are two options in terms of the bottom of the blouse. I made the version with the ruffle along the bottom, but there is a straight version that obviously is slightly longer and then you can tuck into jeans. I just love the ruffle. So I had to make the version with the ruffle. This one I made from a Merchant and Mills linen that I fell in love with a couple of years ago actually and I was saving it for a special project and I thought this would work really well. I love linen and in the winter it's just a lovely fabric to wear as it does breathe when you're inside and you can certainly layer it up with some lovely warm jumpers over the top when you head outside. I really enjoy making French navy patterns, the finishing is beautiful and the instructions are really well put together, they hold your hand really well through all the different processes and I always feel like I have a beautifully finished garment at the end of sewing up a French navy pattern. I really love sewing slowly through these patterns and really focusing on making it a beautiful garment that I'll wear for years to come and I think that is the case with this vetiver blouse. So, thank you Dolly. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing my five or six wardrobe heroes in this video. Do let me know what your winter wardrobe heroes are. I would love to know which patterns you reach for again and again in your autumn and winter wardrobe. So do leave those in the comments below. I'm really looking forward to popping back on next week and sharing what I've been making this October. I'll warn you now, there hasn't been a lot of sewing going on because it has been half term for the last couple of weeks and I've been enjoying spending lots of time with my children. But there are a few things that I'm looking forward to sharing with you in that video, so do pop back next week and see what I've been getting up to in the sewing room this October. Until then, I hope you have a lovely week ahead filled with lots of happy sewing and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!